You are the average of the top five people that you spend your time with. So it is critical that you master your network. In today's video, I'm gonna give you the top three differences on good networking versus bad networking. Cause this is super important. Now, a lot of you guys have already heard things about networking in the past, but most of it has been all wrong. Here's an example. How many times have you ever seen, you know, a family member or a friend go out to a network mixer? Maybe they're going to some happy hour event. And at this event, you know, they're mixing and mingling with people. They're shaking hands and they're making conversations. Everything is seeming to go pretty good. And they exchange business cards before the end of the day. But for some reason, those conversations never go anywhere. How many times have you received a business card from a person and it just sat in your wallet? You didn't do anything with it. No business deals came from it. You didn't make any more money. That is not effective networking. That's just play networking. A lot of people are play networkers. And I want to give you the three things that all master networkers know about really creating change. Here's number one. You must develop a criteria about being in a room with game-changing people. You know, what's the point of working a room if you're not in the right room? So it's not just about you mixing and mingling at any event, at any networking forum, at any mixer. You have to know how to put yourself in the right environment. You have to know how to get around the right people that can give you real results. So the first thing that I want you to do is, I want you to write down specifically what you're looking for as you're trying to get something from a person, okay? You might be interested in getting a better job. And so you need to be able to find rooms where hiring managers are there in very good companies. Maybe you're trying to be an entrepreneur and you want to be able to network around other entrepreneurs. Well, you've got to first develop a criteria. You can't just go to any random event hoping that things will just work out on its own. No, the only way that you can really get to where you want to get is if you plan for it first and then just go to the events that match the criteria of what you've already listed. You know, a lot of fake networkers, they spend a lot of time hobnobbing. They spend a lot of time rubbing elbows, pretending that they're doing something, but it's really just action faking. <laughs> it's not real action taking, as one of my mentors would say. You gotta network to make sure that every person that you touch bases with is actually worth your time. So number one is develop that criteria. Number two, you got to develop a script in advance that you will use to follow up with people after you have connected with them. Again, what is one of the main detriments to bad networking? You go to an event and the event could actually have quality people. But what happens is people will exchange their little business cards Nothing happens, and in a few days, you forget the fact that you even had a conversation with this person to begin with. Your life doesn't change one iota. If you want real, lasting progress and change, before you even go to an event, already have a script written out on what you want to say to a person for a follow. -up. Here's an example. Hey, John, this is Uzziah. You know, I had a really great time connecting with you yesterday. I loved when we talked about A, B, C, and D. I would love for us to pick back up on our conversation about B, C, D, E, F. So send me a message back and let's chat. I'd love to hang out. Drinks on me. Whatever the case may be, right? Come up with a script that just simply acknowledges the fact of who you are, the person that you've already touched bases with, how you connected, right? How you found a common ground. 
Because when somebody else sees that, they're going to say, oh, wow, yeah, I remember this person. Yeah, we had a really great chat about this. They don't have to rack their brain. They don't have to just look at your email or your message is just one spam message out of a thousand. You already now have your in. You have your foot in the door. The number two most important thing is to have that script. And literally, you can just come up with a template, save it on your computer, so that way every time you find yourself networking with somebody new, all you do is change the name, change the topic, and the rest of the message stays the same. The third most important thing that you really need to do, and this is so key, that if you don't apply this third lesson that I'm sharing with you, number one and number two won't really work. If you don't have something of value to give to other people, you're never going to be the person that gets other people's attention. What do I mean when I say that? You know, I've got these friends that are well-intended and they like to always work a room. You know, so there, it's no problem helping them understand the importance of connecting with people and they're likable, they're friendly, they're assertive, they know how to be able to get people's phone numbers. But what happens over time is the other person that they were trying to network with doesn't give them a lot of time in exchange because the other person on the other end of that phone doesn't perceive a lot of value from you Instead, it's just a what can they give to you type of relationship. Let me tell you something. The best way for you to be selfish is to be selfless. I once heard this guy say that. It was a very important quote. Um, if you Meaning, if you want to be able to get something from another person, the best thing for you to do is to give unapologetically. This world is filled with so many takers, so many leeches, so many narcissistic individuals that are just so entitled to believe that everybody just owes them something. So here it is, you're in a room. You have nothing of value to offer somebody else. You don't, you know, help you can't offer your time, you don't have any solutions, you haven't thought through any steps, but you in your mind just believe that you're just gonna go up to another person that has tremendous value and you're just going to just ask them for something and then they're gonna give you that thing straight away. Somehow they're just gonna stop everything that they're doing in their busy set schedule creating value. They were already good before they met you. But you and your kind of selfish mind think that just because of the fact that you're you and you can ask for somebody's number, that another person is just going to want to take away time out of their busy day to day and just pour themselves into you. This could not be more flawed. If you want to really network with powerful people, you must possess something of value that makes a powerful person want to demand your time. Otherwise, they're going to feel comfortable continuing their life as they've already been living it. It take you got to be able to give in order to take. You can't get something for nothing. So I want you to think about Something that you possess as a natural strength doesn't even have to be related to the industry that you're going after. Think about the number one gift that you possess and think about how you can take your gift and use it in a way that could be appealing to other people. Here's an example. Let's say that you want to figure out how to start a business. And so you go out and you contact a successful entrepreneur. They live in your city. And you don't know anything about business, but you know how to cook the hell out of some food. 
you are an excellent chef and you're just trying to figure out how to get set up with the food truck or something like that. Instead of just going to an entrepreneur and just bothering them and being like, hey, you know, can you mentor me? Hey, can you just take five hours out of your day to be able to just pour into me, but I not give anything to you? What would be a lot more likely to get you real results and real success in life is to say, hey, I know you're already successful in your business and a lot of your time is already consumed. I'll tell you what. Every day, I would be willing to make you a meal as long as I can shadow what you're doing at your job. You don't have to worry about any food costs. You don't have to worry about eating healthy. I'll knock out meals for you for the next two weeks. All I ask is that as I come and give you the meals, I just simply shadow what it is that you do at work and maybe just ask you one question a day. Would that be a fair trade? See, then you're actually getting somewhere because the person is going to look back and say, okay, you have some real value to offer to me. And I think that your request is reasonable. Okay. Life is about exchanging value. So don't be so selfish that you're just focusing on take, take, take and you're not actually a giver. The people that have accomplished uh, the most in this world are relentless givers, extreme givers. In fact, the most wealthy people in this world are the people that have figured out how to be able to share their gift with as many people as possible, all right? So here's what I want you to do. Number one, I want you to think about what your criteria is. Going back to number one, I want you to think about what is the right room for you to work. Instead of you just going into any event and wasting your time, because you could have been doing other things more productive, I want you to be able to put your best foot forward every time you step out. So focus on your criteria. And if you are interested, in learning more about transitioning successfully out of your nine to five job into your business where you will develop the skills of networking, negotiations, selling, and beyond. If you're serious about the things that I discussed in this video, I want you to click the link below or tap the card above because I wanna be able to show you how to be able to successfully make that transition. You know, over 80% of people in the world have made the decision and had the idea that they want to be entrepreneurs. But the problem is getting started, just taking that first step. What if I could show you how to focus on a few key things that you need to do while you're still in your nine to five and have the security of a paycheck every couple weeks? before making the jump full-time into being an entrepreneur so that when you make the jump and exit out of your job, you're already walking into money that you're making from your company. I want to be able to show you how to start generating revenue now before you quit your job so that way when you make the jump, you won't be in limbo, all right? This is a free training. It's my free gift to you. All I want you to do is click the link below or tap the card above. This is completely free, all right? If you like the content that I put out on these videos, trust me when I tell you, this video that I'm sharing with you, I don't put out publicly because it's a little bit more private because it has a lot more um, quality information, okay? So make sure that you subscribe to this channel below. Feel free to leave me a comment. Let me know about the criteria that you're going to look for the next time you go to network in a room. All right. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care.